Morning. I swear a lot. It is 43 past 2 in the PM, and you're watching The Foreman, or listening. I'm your host, Foreman. Hello, how's it going? Uh, I had an idea for a topic today. It was something I felt was worth talking about, because a lot of the time I do, of course, talk about myself, because, I don't know, it's a pretty easy point of reference, I suppose, to talk about oneself, but that's all well and good. But... As I've gotten older, you know, I'm 30 now, I turned 30 like a month ago now at time of recording, give or take, a month and a week maybe. Um, you know, age makes you think about different things. And like, I've got aches and pains as a 30 year old. Most 30 year olds tend to have got like my hip. Uh, I have a lot of problems with my hip. I think since I worked a factory job and um, it got so bad that I couldn't take a couple steps without like it spasming and me being unable to move while it was occurring. And while doing this, I had to move around like window frames and lengths of steel and stuff. And that was really painful. Um, my point though, is that it's possible that such things, I've also got a problem with like my groin, I think. I don't even remember how I did that one. I think I walked too much or something. So I used to walk a lot as a kid. I don't remember what I did to fuck that up, but that's also a problem. Neck and shoulder pains, you know, that came from sprawling out on my uh, bed playing uh, Dawn of War on my laptop back in the day. Uh, eye strain, which is just from me doing my work, you know, that's just the way of that. And I thought to myself, like, I'd like to try and provide some, uh, maybe some advice, as it were, a little PSA to all of you guys, because a lot of you are a lot younger than me. Some of you are in, like, your mid to late teens. Some of you, I hope none of you are younger than that, because I do swear a lot on this show, but, you know, I can't tell you what to do. Uh, and then some of you are in your 20s. If there are those of you out there who are older than me, I don't think there are many, and you can, I guess, disregard most of what I'm saying, because I would not sit here and try and lecture you on how you live your life. But I thought maybe it might be worth it if today I tried to sort of give you guys a few pointers on like Look after yourself while your body's still young and vibrant and strong. Mine's, mine's not decrepit, all right? I'm fine. I'm doing pretty well for myself in the grand scheme of things. I can move around. I can I can go wherever I want to go. I'm pretty lucky, right? I'm able-bodied. That's nice, right? That's the bare minimum that I want, and I'm happy with that. Also, I guess if you aren't able-bodied, then a lot of the advice I'm going to give is going to be pretty moot. And I wouldn't try and lecture you on how to live, because I don't know what it's like to not be able-bodied. So... It would be a bit rich coming from me to try and tell you how to live your life or what you should or shouldn't do. So I'm not gonna, obviously I'm not gonna try and tell you, but point is, I didn't, I wanted to talk about this, but I knew this was a topic that a lot of the time is done very somberly, you know, where it's like, don't turn out like me, kids. Make sure you eat your greens and drink your milk or whatever. And I didn't want it to be that way. I think that's so cliched by this point that it's gotten to the point of being dull. I also didn't want to approach it like a youth pastor where I was like, hey kids, working out is cool. I mean, it is cool, but like, it's a drag. We know working out is a drag. I'm not going to pretend it isn't. A lot of you are adults. I'm not trying to talk to you like children. It's just that with the context of someone who is a bit older and with the aches and pains that comes with, I was hoping I could perhaps provide some advice to maybe allow you to preempt some of that shit. And you know, you're probably going to have a few aches and pains growing up. It's just what happens. But you might be able to minimize them and generally feel better and healthier as you grow older. Some of this shit is going to be horrifically obvious, but I'm going to state it just in case because this is the internet and you never know how much someone does or doesn't know. There have been multiple occasions on the chat, on the server, sorry, where I've stated something I thought was exceedingly obvious and people have been like, no way, really? And I thought they were taking the piss and I'm like, come on, man. And they're like, no, really? Like, I didn't know that was a thing. And I'm like, oh... Oh, okay, right. Fair enough. You know, we don't all have the same experiences. What's obvious to one person is not obvious to another. I wanted to try and provide some of that information, right? The most obvious, we'll get some of the obvious ones out of the way. If you don't smoke, don't start smoking. That's fucking obvious. If you do smoke, at the very least, consider starting to try and cut down and potentially move towards quitting entirely. I should do that. I'm kind of working on it. I switched to a vape but I'm still consuming relatively the same amount of nicotine that I was, I think, back when I was smoking cigarettes. So the situation's not fixed. It's minorly improved, but not fixed. But my advice to you would, of course, and this is so painfully obvious and cliche that I feel stupid for saying it, but it is worth re-emphasizing. Try and avoid cigarettes. Just, look, if you do it, whatever, it's your fucking life. But my advice would be to not, okay? That's it. Uh, whatever. I don't care about the social aspects, the smell aspects, whatever. In terms of your personal health, I would not recommend it. It doesn't seem like a problem when you're 18. It becomes a bit more of an issue when you're 28. 
and then from that point onwards. So perhaps keep that to a minimum. Drinking, honestly, done in moderation is fine, right? Make sure, wait till you're old enough because it's just, it's not worth the fucking, A, it's not worth the potential legal ramifications to not, to drink underage really. And B, you're not missing much. I like drinking, but it's not all that. It's something that seems a lot more cool and interesting and fun before you can do it. And then after you do it, you're like, this is pretty fun, but it's not. There are other fun things, you know, like as much as I do enjoy having a couple of drinks with my friends, it's always worth pointing out that for what five drinks at the pub, I could have bought an indie game. And which of those two is going to give me more enjoyment? The indie game <laughs> almost guaranteed, right? It's going to last longer. There's more to experience in there. Social aspects are good, but you don't need to drink to socialize, right? I really trying not to make this fucking youth pastory, all right? I'm not trying to preach. I'm not trying to talk down. I'm just, and I'm not trying to say shit that's too obvious. It's just, you know, sometimes people need to hear it. So I'm trying, but those are probably the two more obvious ones. I'm not even gonna talk about drugs. Come on, man. Come on, <laughs> really, like, all right, fine. I will speak completely honestly here. I would avoid all of them if you can. Um. Marijuana is probably the least problematic one, both in terms of your overall health and the potential legal ramifications. Uh, not that you would, but I'm saying if someone out there somehow happens to do that, then that would probably be the least bad one, but you still probably shouldn't. That's the more obvious ones out of the way. That is probably the most patronizing ones out of the way, and I apologize for having even done them, but I had to. I kinda... If, what if I did something like this and someone got on my case, like, what, are you gonna tell people not to not smoke? And I'm like... I thought it was obvious, but obviously it's not that obvious because I'm a smoker, so maybe I'm just an idiot. I don't know. It doesn't matter. We move on. So overall health. Now, this is a broad spectrum that comes down to your personal tastes, okay? Like me, for instance, I never wanted to get jacked. I never wanted to be big. I've always been a fairly skinny guy, and I like that for myself. Not due to any opinions on anyone else's weight or anyone else's appearance. It was just that for me, I kind of liked being slender. That meant not too bulky, not too muscular or anything like that. Just fairly slender. I've still widened out a bit as an adult. Because that is kind of a natural part of it. And many people's bodies does do just do that. You will probably find as you grow older that you'll put on weight a bit more and... It's not a big deal. It feels like a big deal, but you'll notice that no one cares. Like, I was pretty self-conscious about how I looked in the baking video that I did, because you see a lot of my torso, and I'm like, hmm. In my head, I was like, oh, I've been putting on a gut a bit recently, honestly. Like, I need to start working that back again. And not only did no one say anything along those lines, one person was like, what's your fitness regime? Because you look more chiseled than I expected. And I'm like, okay, all right, I guess I'm not doing that bad. I still don't think I'm chiseled, but I must be doing all right. But the point is, you will put on a bit of weight, but if you want, if you don't want that, if you're not okay with that, there are plenty of things you can do. My recommendation would be to start some form of fitness regime. It does not have to be brutal. It does not have to be like absolutely gassing yourself each day. Just even if you're like, okay, well, uh, I don't know, every night or every other night or whatever, I'm just going to go for a walk. Just a, a couple walk, a little walk around the blocks or something. Just get myself, like, if you spend a lot of time in a fucking at a desk, in your chair, on your computer or whatever, like I do, I spend a lot of fucking time at my desk. I really fucking do. Something like that is helpful. It's why I got a treadmill, because where I live... It's in the middle of nowhere, so the only places to walk are either farmlands owned by other people, and if, I, if I'm just strolling around there, they're going to come out and ask me why I'm there, because they don't know what I'm doing. I also might be trampling their crops, which they might not be particularly keen on. There's also a heavily busy main road where I could get flattened by a car, so I'd rather not risk that every single day. It's not like a town main road. I mean, there's a main road where people fly around a blind corner at 80 miles an hour. I don't want to take that risk. It's just the way of things. Obviously, there's dog walking, but that's a little different. They do most of the work. Um, but that's why I got a treadmill, so that if I want to burn off some energy, personally, myself, uh, I can just get on the treadmill. And I just... And I'll even just walk on it. It's not even as if I've been, like, running on it or doing a proper brutal fitness regime. I've just been walking on it. Burn a little extra energy, knock off a few calories, just get myself moving a little bit. If you want to go proper hard fitness, then fucking go for it, and I highly encourage you to do so, because that is very rewarding. But if you don't want to, you don't have to look at fit fitness as 
either nothing or everything. There is a ton of grey area that you can work with, and such things will be good for your body. As you grow up, having a strong core is great for your back, of all things. Having more muscular support in your body helps a lot, especially if you happen to have large breasts, which I know this is a topic that often is accompanied by but like, let's be fucking adults for a second, shall we? Though large breasts can cause back problems. We all know this. This has become a more regularly known thing. And while you're probably gonna have that anyway, and that sucks, and I do feel for you, engaging your core and strengthening it will do a lot for your general posture, and it'll do a lot for your back. It will help. I'm not promising it will fix the problem. I'm not pers I'm not a person born with that body type, so I don't know everything about it but it's gonna at least help. It's worth trying. On the subject of back problems, actually, posture is important. And the sooner you start working at it, the better. I haven't, I should. Because not only does posture help just with your general neck and back and shoulders and stuff, like straightening that out and having it be straight is important, but it's an appearance thing as well. It just looks better to stand up straight. It does. Your mum or your dad or your carer or your guardian will have told you this a million fucking times to the point of absolute nausea and it would be extremely irritating, but it is a thing. Posture is helpful and it's something you want to jump on when you're younger rather than when you're older and you're more set in your ways and you've already got neck and back problems, so actually attempting to violently correct that causes your body to go, uh, no, I don't like it. Whereas, when you're younger and your body's still a bit more malleable, you can force yourself into that habit to make that better. It's an important- it doesn't seem like an important one, but it is. But also in terms of, you know, your general body, it's worth looking up what- not necessarily ways in which you can injure yourself in general, but ways in which normal activities can be damaging. The most obvious one is lifting heavy shit do it with your legs. Obviously, we've all seen, like, you know, workplace uh, signs and stuff saying, like, lift with your knees, not with your back, and it's all on TV and stuff, but this is valuable advice. Don't twist when uh, lifting something, for example. I did that the other day, and I felt my entire torso jolt, and I was, like, paralyzed for, like, a second, with, like, a solid second or two with just pain, and then it kind of faded, and I was like, oh, fuck, God. You become a lot more susceptible to that when you're older unless you take care of yourself more when you're younger, unless you're more careful with yourself when you're younger. Oh, this is so cliche, but I can't help it. This is worth saying. When you're younger, you feel like you're invincible. I did. Not literally. You don't literally think you're invincible. You're not going to jump in front of a fucking car and expect nothing to happen. But I mean, like, when you trip over as, like, a teenager or a kid or a young adult, you're like, oh, that hurt. Oh, whatever. When you trip over as an adult, that can mean you're limping for several, like, an older adult, you know. That can feel, that can result in you limping for several days because your leg just goes, nah, I didn't like that. Nah, I'm going to need a minute. And it's just fucked. A big important one, actually, on this subject would be... Never allow a workplace to make you do shit that's dangerous for your body. Never. Do not let them. It's not worth it. It seems worth it in the short term, but it is not worth potentially damaging yourself for a company that couldn't give two shits if you were still walking this time next year. Don't do it. Never do it. If they try to tell you to fucking ignore safety shit, if they try and tell you to do stuff that puts you in any risk in any way, any form of, of harm, or short or long-term damage, fucking par them off. Absolutely not. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Especially not if, and I've been here, so don't act like I'm, don't think I'm judging, because I'm not. If you're working like retail or food service or something where they clearly don't have a particularly high opinion of you anyway, because you're just a cog that makes their fucking machine go, don't hurt yourself for them. Don't do it. Don't risk it, I should say. Don't risk it. Ever. Do not allow it. Another bit of advice, it's less physical and more mental actually, although this can play into uh, the physical, and that is hobbies, right? Like, you know, I imagine, I don't want to uh, make any assumptions on in, on anyone's part uh, of the audience, but I imagine a lot of you are probably into video games, you know, just venturing that out, that out there as a possible guess, you might like video games, I don't know, I certainly do. Uh, and that is definitely, for many of us, a hobby. And it's a cool one, it's a fucking cool one, and I love getting to experience loads of different kinds of games. It's very fucking enjoyable, I love doing it on the show, I love doing it in my off time. Most of my time is spent playing video games because I fucking love it, and it's what I choose to do. I enjoy it very much. But, 
I would recommend picking up a hobby. Not something you can monetize, although if you do, great, cool, good, you know, more money's always nice, but not for that purpose. Pick up a quote-unquote skill. It doesn't have to be anything practical at all. Just something you like doing, like playing, playing an instrument, painting Warhammer figurines, playing a sport, like if you just casually play like tennis or something. I don't know, I don't play many sports. I used to be really good at badminton back in school. Like I was surprisingly good at it because I remember, yeah, because mum signed me and my brother up for uh, like a badminton club at like the town hall. I actually got pretty good at it. Like people would sometimes be like, oh yeah, Foreman, I'll play in school. They'd be like, oh yeah, Foreman, I'll play against you. And I'd absolutely serve them despite not being physically athletic at all because I knew exactly how far the racket when I knew exactly the right point to hit the shellcock with and I would absolutely send it against people who were twice my size who could barely manage a proper hit because they weren't hitting it properly. That felt very good. I kind of wish I kept up with badminton and it's certainly not too late. Maybe I should. The thoughts for the future and this isn't about me, this is about you. Pick up a sport or a hobby, a little crafting hobby, start drawing stuff, start painting stuff, do whatever. Because when you get to my age, if you are significantly younger, you'll be a lot better at it. You'll be really fucking good at it by the time you get to my age. Like if you're, let's say you're 20, let's use the average and say that you're 20, okay? It's an easy round number. A lot of you are actually younger than that, but let's say you're 20 and you start... I don't know. Let's say you start baking, right? As, a, as an example to a, a recent video, yeah, you know? Let's say you start baking. You're like, I'm gonna start, you know, I'm just gonna start with some cake mixes and just get used to the process of baking. And then maybe when I know a bit more, I'll try not using mixes and kind of branch out. Imagine if you did that for 10 years, right? Which will happen. 10 years will pass, like whether you like it or not. And then you get to my age and you're 30 and you've been baking for 10 years. You're going to be a fucking pro. You're going to be fucking good. Like really good at it. Like people you know are going to be lining up for a chance for you to make them a fucking cake. Like the way I practice baking, even though I did it very casually and like even now it's extremely casual, is that I baked whenever it was someone's birthday. That's how I got my practice. Because people rarely are unhappy to receive a cake. Like, even if they've already got a birthday cake. Because, you know, someone close to them would typically get them their birthday cake with the candles in it and they all wish the happy birthday and such. But you'd be hard-pressed to find a human being who is disappointed because they got another cake. And people usually appreciate the effort as well. It's why I kind of like doing it, though. Because it feels like I'm actually giving something a bit more when I give when I bake people cakes because... Not only am I giving them a cake, which they're already happy with, but I'm giving them my time as well. They know that took time to make. Like, the video was cut down heavily. That took more than half an hour to bake that cake, but it was cut down, I lost some footage, you know. It's a longer process, but it's something I do that I'm happy to do when I see a happy face when I give that person a cake, and most people are happy when you give them cakes. So, baking's a good one. But, you know, something like badminton, something like, uh, you know, collecting Warhammer models or painting or painting models it doesn't have to be Warhammer. That's just the most popular example. Painting things, carving things, uh, tinkering with cars. You could get into mechanics and stuff. You could do whatever you want, but pick up a hobby because, like I said, in 10 years, you'll be fucking good at it. And second of all, it's good for the soul. I love video games, but if I sat in this chair and actually sat in this chair and played video games, all day, like actually all day, it doesn't feel like a very good day because it doesn't feel like I did something, you know, like it's all I did. I sat and enjoyed myself playing video games. Relaxation is a form of productivity and we'll get to that in a minute, but having something else you can work on, like right now, for instance, I work on um, my fitness and I work on practicing bass, right? Those are two things I do outside of any work or obligation I have and I choose to do those things and I feel better for having done them because I'm getting better at base, I'm getting more healthy by going on the treadmill and stuff. And over 10 years that provides a consistent income of positive feelings while also being beneficial to you as a whole, usually physically as well when it comes to things like exercise. So this is worth picking up early in your life. Another thing, and this is difficult to quantify, this is, it's, it's, hard, it's easy to say this, hard to actually do it because it doesn't, 
it just kind of happens. But another would be to get yourself into a good mindset in regards to productivity, which is awkward, right? The grind set is bad, okay? Me and Sweetman have both kind of been of the mindset we're just on the fucking grind, working as hard as we can all the time. And that is not good. It's not good. We both have discussed this numerous times, he and I have both discussed it numerous times and we've agreed upon it and constantly say this to each other that it's not good we need to take more time to rest we need to take more time to talk to our friends and family and hang out with them and we need to take more time to ourselves i think i think sweetman's been doing that a little bit but not nearly enough and i have forced myself to do it for instance by taking sundays off which i didn't do last week because i did the baking video but i did that for fun that's you know i just wanted to do that for fun and it turned out everyone really liked it so that was just a happy result everyone won from that but you need to get like don't get me wrong it's good to get into a mindset where you want to work at the things you want to work at right like that's great but you also need to teach yourself when to take breaks like i said earlier a big part of productivity is relaxation relaxation is not bone idleness it's not laziness it's not an unwillingness to work relaxation is a necessary part of the productive process you need to rest you have to rest for some people me and sweetman included sometimes it felt like we only slept because we physically had to sleep but you need to force yourself to take other forms of rest as well. If you're working yourself really hard, acknowledge that you're working yourself really hard and give yourself things to look forward to, both in terms of relaxation and general enjoyable things to do. If there's a gig in town, tell yourself you're going to go to that gig. You've got something to look forward to now. If you've been pushing yourself really hard, like, you know, if you're in uni, this is actually, uni is the time to learn these skills, this skill specifically, which is how to be productive and how to be careful about being productive. If you are cracking out your fucking um, coursework and your uni work and whatever, make sure you take some time to rest because your work will suffer if you don't look after yourself, just like your health will suffer if you don't look after yourself. Every aspect of many aspects of your life can suffer if you don't look after yourself And that doesn't mean being a fitness freak who has kale smoothies in the morning And goes for a 10 kilometer jog every single day Because I can't imagine doing that. That sounds nightmarish. How would I have time to do anything else in my fucking day? That kind of lifestyle is the privilege of the rich. Let's be fucking real. It is but that doesn't mean you can't look after yourself in certain ways. If you don't have weights, but you want to do some weight work, mate, just uh, honest to God, I'm not shitting you here. Just do some reps with, with like a can of beans in each hand. Is it proper? No. But if you feel a burn, it's working. You can make it work. But I feel like we're divulging, by uh, diverging off topic just a little bit. These are things that I think are worth doing at an earlier age. Not, it's a, and let me actually re-emphasize, ah, uh, it occurs to me, this is actually really important. It's never too late. Let me be clear. If you're like, oh, well, Foreman, you're saying all this and I'm 31, uh, there's not really much point. No, there is precisely a point. There is very much a point to do this because at our age, we need to look after ourselves harder now than we did when we were younger. Now we have to make up for lost time, time that we spend not looking after ourselves properly. But if you're younger, if you're 20 or younger or even older, if you're like 25, now's the time to set yourself up for the rest of your life, right? And enjoy, you'll be able to enjoy it and it'll be hype and it'll be fun. And you'll be like, oh, I have this, like you'll be talking to someone you'll be like, oh yeah, I have this skill, I can fucking draw or something. And people will be like, whoa, that's cool. Oh yeah, I um I like to fucking write. I'm a writer, like, I write uh, stuff online, like I write fanfics and I write books and articles, stuff like that. And that's cool. And that's stuff that other people find cool. And you can compare these things and it's enjoyable. And it makes you feel good that you have something like that. It's something you can take pride in, which helps, which gives a huge boost to your mental health. Having something you can be proud of. And you can get it. It's not exclusive to unique people, to certain people. I'm not the only person who can start a fucking YouTube channel. You can as well. And you can be better than me, quite easily. It would not be difficult. I'm sure you could. You just gotta put the time in. I probably took too much time to get to where I am. Like. I think I've been doing LP in total because there was a channel before this one. I think I've been doing it for over six years. Oh, I might actually be approaching eight years now. Then again, there was a break while I, uh, when my computer exploded back in, mm, what year was that? Like 2016? I can't remember. Point is, 
I've been doing it for a long time. I should probably be better at this than I am. But I am still better at it than I was when I was like 21. Because I've been doing it for this long. 21 year old me couldn't fathom that I would get to this point. And I'm not even that far in the grand scheme of things, but I'm further than I was and I'm better than I was and that's a point of pride for me. 21 year old me, year old me also couldn't fathom that I'd be in a band, but here I fucking am. It's worth getting started, even if you're shit. And you will be shit at it when you start. You'll be shit at anything when you start. Making a channel, drawing, writing, playing an instrument, playing a sport, painting your models, whatever. You will, you will be crap to begin with. Because you will be. Because you will be. I was and everyone else who has ever done anything was crap at it when they started. That's more reason to get started. Because if the sooner you start, the sooner you'll be good at it. And then you can take that into the future and you'll be happy with it. It's a, I know I'm laboring this point a bit more, but physical health is very important, but I would argue that mental health is the most important, and this is something that can help you in that regard. You play a sport and get good at it, you feel good about get playing good at playing a sport, and the exercise is good for your brain as well. You learn how to write or draw, you know, that's uh, a lot of personal expression, which is good for your brain. It allows you to get those emotions out, which is very helpful. Or you learn to do what I do, in which you yap into a microphone. That allows you to express yourself, to really get thoughts off your chest, to really express yourself through the volume of, or the, the metric, or the, the form, I guess, of entertainment and performance. And you can do other things with that. You can become an actor if you want to be, or a stand-up comedian. You can do it, not even necessarily as careers, but as hobbies and just enjoy them and be like, well, yeah, you know, like, I'm pretty good. I've got an all right job that pays my bills. I'm also a fucking stand-up comedian. That's a, that is a flex. That is a, anything is a flex. It feels good to be able to have these things. And I think you should, you don't have to. If you're perfectly happy not having one, like you're like, well, Foreman, I don't really feel like I need to do that. Then don't worry about it. You don't have to. There's nothing saying you have to. If you forced yourself to do something like that, you'd be fucking miserable. Like, because you're just forcing yourself to do something you're bad at because you think you should. No, don't worry about it. But if you find something you like, it doesn't matter how silly it is. It doesn't matter how unproductive it is. I'd recommend going for it. You should do it. It will make you feel better in the future. I would continue with my advice by saying that if you get the opportunity to do cool or, or weird things or something slightly unusual whilst you're, say, I don't know, if you still live with your parents, for instance, and you get the opportunity to, do, I don't know, go travel somewhere or go see something or go do something cool or weird, I would recommend you to take it because it becomes a lot more difficult later on in life when you have more responsibilities to take care of. Take the time to experience those things. It's not as if you're never going to get to do this stuff again when you're older. That's not true. That is straight up untrue. And I would not attempt to convey that idea to you. But it is easier when you're younger. Just like, you know, you can still look after yourself when you're older. It's easier when you're younger. I would, and I would recommend giving it a shot. If they're like, I don't know, if you're at college and they're like, oh, we're going to do a trip to fucking Germany or something to do something there. If you can go, I would recommend going. Germany's a cool place. If you live in Germany and you're offered a trip to Germany, I guess that's kind of shit because you already know the place because you live there. But if you're anywhere else, I'd recommend going for it. Anywhere except Britain, this place sucks. Take chances, do stuff, look after yourself and be careful. But I would really rec- I know, I know, you guys have heard this a million fucking times and I'm just some old dude on the internet, why the fuck would you listen to me? I get it, I really do. I don't expect my words to change, suddenly have everyone be like, you know what, you're right, I'm going to take up tennis and paint models and draw pictures and, and get in a band and- you No, know, I know that's not what's going to happen, but if one person goes, actually, you know what, I guess he has a point. Uh, I've been meaning to, like, start exercising a bit. I think I'll crack on with it. Like, I'm not expecting to put new ideas in your minds that you've never fucking considered before. I don't consider myself that <laughs> knowledgeable or f full of wisdom to be like, oh, you don't even know about anything here, let me tell you. But it's more going to be a case of like, huh, you know, I was kind of thinking about doing something like that, like that but... I haven't had it put that way, yeah, maybe I will. Maybe I will start exercising. Or I really did kind of want to draw. I think I'll start drawing. Let me tell you, 
instruments, like playing a musical instrument. They say that the best time to do that is to learn from childhood or in like your teenage years, and it becomes harder when you grow up. Yes, it becomes harder. It does not become impossible. Let me make that clear. Just because it's harder does not mean it is not doable. If you are 27 and you've always wanted to learn to play the drums, play the fucking drums. Do it. I appreciate there are financial obstacles there. Like, I'm not saying you should overcome all obstacles to immediately get yourself a drum kit. Just get into the mindset of like, okay, fuck it. I'm going to save up for a drum kit and I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to learn to play bass. I'm going to learn to play the violin. I'm going to learn to play sax. I'm gonna learn to play the triangle. I'm still working on that one. Harmonica is a cool fucking instrument. I always wanted to learn one of those. I had one, but I don't know where the fuck it went. My granddad, I remember, used to love harmonicas as well. It's kind of why I wanted to learn one. But you're, ne you're never too old to learn an instrument. You're never too old to improve yourself, actually. Well, uh, barring certain circumstances, at certain ages, when you start to exert yourself too much, your body reacts negatively to it, which is why you should do this when you're younger. But failing that option, there is still exercise and stuff you can do when you're older, but if you're younger and you take care of yourself, these problems will crop up much, much, much later. And surely that's the goal. It gives you more time to enjoy yourself to the fullest, rather than worrying about such things. Also, when you're younger, you have more time. You do. It may seem like you don't, but you do. Trust me, you have more time as a kid than you do. Not a kid, sorry. That sounds patronizing. As a young adult or teenager, you have more time to do stuff than you do when you're older because you just pick up more responsibilities. It's just the natural way of things. You will adapt to it very easily. It's not a difficult transition. But use that time now while you got it. Now, if you want to spend that time playing Dawn of War, Dark Crusade specifically, not three, it's garbage. But if you want to spend your time doing that, that's your right to spend that time to that way. Do it. I did it. I love that game. I love that game. It was great. My belief, I beat my first campaign on that game with the Tau, and I don't know why, because the Imperial Guard are my favorite faction. So I don't know why that was the first time I actually finished a campaign. But whatever. Look after yourself. Not just because it's the thing you're supposed to do, but because you'll set yourself up for a more enjoyable life. You'll set up the rest of your life to be enjoyable. But don't forget to take time to do stuff for yourself as well. Don't focus your entire life on, okay, I'm gonna have a strict regimen of fucking, I'm gonna play soccer and I'm gonna say soccer because if I say football, y'all will think I mean that embarrassing bullshit over in the States and I don't. I'm gonna play soccer and then I'm gonna learn to play the sax and then I'm gonna start drawing and then I'm gonna write an entire book and then like, you know, pace yourself. Like, don't get too easy but you can set yourself up for an enjoyable life give yourself something that you're proud of doing doesn't have to be something you make money off but if you does become something you make money off that's fantastic if you want to become a let's player fucking do it start making videos i taught myself to use editing software it is not too complicated i promise you you can figure it out but start moving towards it even if you can't do it right now keep it in mind to be like yeah i think i would like to start doing that in terms of exercise you can literally start today it's that easy. Doesn't mean you have to, but you can. You can always start doing that. Perhaps not as efficiently as one might hope, but it is possible. I'm gonna leave it there, ladies and gentlemen, because I think I'm rambling a bit, but what do you think? I don't know. I, I, as I got th started getting through this topic, I questioned myself. Where I was like, is this really worth talking about? Like, is this actually gonna really, I don't know, help anyone or affect anyone or resonate with anyone in any way? It doesn't feel like it will, but... I guess I was just hoping that at least someone will hear this and be like, you know what, yeah, I've, I've been thinking about it. I think I will start doing that thing, and that would be very satisfying for me. Let me know. Are there things you want to start doing? Are there things you want to start doing, but you're not sure if you can? Are there things you want to start doing, but you've kind of been putting off? Like, get it out there, and then think about it. I'm not saying that, like, oh, you have to do it now because of all this, but... Look at it again and think about it. Is this something you wanted to do? Is this something you would enjoy doing? Is it something you think you could enjoy doing? And if so, might not, mightn't it be worth actually giving it a shot? But that's just me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening. Special thanks to Lit Potatoes, Proxy, Kamenera, Heartland, Herrick J, Dresso, Seon Distance, LOL, Final Legend, Etherbin, Linky, Zeon Cedar, Bimblewort, Majoko, Mymoon, Alkir, Sweet Baby Red, Jessicizzy, Blutonium Pie, Dreamer Ghost, Lepal Lullaby, K Bub, Magic Owl, The Frostbite, Monsoon, Warmaster, QSCP1068, Namad, and Kenny T800 for supporting me on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys. And thank you all so much for watching. I'm really sorry if it just sounded like I was preaching to you the whole time. I'm not trying to talk down to you and be like, oh, these kids don't know what they've, how lucky they have it and what they've got and all that. I get it. I was there as well, all right? I didn't think about any of this crap when I was your age. Why the fuck would I? 
it just doesn't seem relevant, does it? Like, I can see it. I'm not sat here thinking like, oh, you're all idiots for not thinking about these kinds of things. No, it's just not prevalent in your mind at this exact moment. I get that, 100%. But I did want to see, and I understand if this isn't effective and that's totally okay, but I wanted to see if I could give y'all a little nudge to just be like, hey, you see that thing you like? Do it, give it a shot. Are you thinking about doing a little bit of exercise? Start doing it, see how you feel. Build yourself up maybe, I don't know, just give it a crack. If you don't want to, if you want to disregard what I've said, that's fine, that's not, it's not a problem at all, and it's not, I wouldn't think less of you if you didn't. It's just, I don't know. I want more people to enjoy themselves, in general, just in general, just to be happy with themselves, and I think encouraging people to take care of themselves before they get to my age would make them happier. I'm already pretty happy. I, this is not me being like, oh, the wasted years. Oh, I can't believe I let it all go. I'm fine. I'm doing all right. I'm pretty good. Could have been better, but everything could always be better. But it might be worth seeing if you could make it better. I remember when I was your age, I couldn't fathom the possibility that I would be in a decent place when I was 30. Not because of any stigma associated with being the age of 30, but because when I was 20, I was fucking miserable. But things are pretty good now. I'm doing all right. I want things to be better for you too, even if you're not in a bad place. If you're in a good place, then I just want you to be in an even better place. That would be great. And if you're in a bad place, then I want you to be able to start working towards being in a better place. But I don't want this to get too deep. It's the end of the video. Whatever I talk about next time, and I have no idea. I came up with this one on a whim, as I always do. So uh, if you've got a topic, then let me know. But otherwise, hope I see you there. Doodles. Goodbye.